Welcome to the world of Mr. Belvedere, the 1985 TV series that left an indelible mark on the landscape of sitcoms. As we delve into the timeless tales of the Owens family and their refined British housekeeper, Mr. Belvedere, one can't help but wonder what personal stories does this series hold for you? Has it ever served as a source of inspiration or left you with a cherished memory? Now, let's explore some fascinating tidbits about the show. Did you know that Mr. Belvedere was adapted from the 1947 novel Belvedere by Gwen Davenport? The series seamlessly blends humor with life lessons, showcasing how a refined Englishman can bring unexpected warmth to an American household. As we reflect on these intriguing details, we invite you to share your own cherished memories or personal experiences with Mr. Belvedere in the comments below. What moments from the show have stuck with you through the years? We'd love to hear your stories and connect over the shared nostalgia for this classic sitcom. Share your thoughts and let's unravel the tapestry of memories woven by Mr. Belvedere. Your experiences are the heart of this community and we can't wait to hear from you. Rob Stone, known for his role as Kevin Owens in the TV series Mr. Belvedere, directed part one of the series finale titled Mr. Belvedere's Wedding, part one. Stone, at the age of 23, took on this role while still a teenager. Following his time on Mr. Belvedere, Stone expanded his career, engaging in directing, producing, and writing for various television series and films. Mr. Belvedere debuted in March 1985 on Friday nights, later joining ABC's popular TGIF lineup. The show enjoyed a five-season run until declining ratings led to a move to Saris in September 1989. In December 1989, midway through its sixth and final season, ABC pulled the series and shelved the remaining eight episodes. The two-part series finale aired in July 1990, with the unaired episodes eventually finding their way to syndication. This shift in scheduling and the subsequent syndication release marked the end of Mr. Belvedere, leaving a lasting impression on fans of the show. Rob Stone's transition from acting to directing in the series finale adds an interesting layer to the show's history. Despite its ups and downs in scheduling, Mr. Belvedere remains a notable part of 1980s television. In the climactic two-part series finale of Mr. Belvedere, titled Mr. Belvedere's Wedding, the show took an unexpected turn. Aired on consecutive Sundays, July 1st and July 8th, 1990, after ABC had pulled the series in December 1989, the finale centered around Mr. Belvedere's marriage to Louise Gilbert, an animal behaviorist. Despite his initial commitment to stay in Pittsburgh and continue serving the Owens family, the wedding ceremony unfolds with a revelation. Louise must go to Africa for work. Faced with this dilemma, Mr. Belvedere makes the difficult choice to leave the Owens family and embark on a new life with his wife. This pivotal moment adds a poignant layer to the show's legacy, showcasing the character's dedication to both duty and personal life. The series, born out of the fourth attempt to adapt Gwen Davenport's 1947 novel Belvedere, found its place on television in 1985 after earlier failed pilots in 1956, 1959, and 1965. Interestingly, the enduring image of Mr. Belvedere and the Owens family, featured in the closing credits, was captured during the final scene of the episode Mr. Belvedere, G.I. George. This snapshot, encapsulating the essence of the show, serves as a lasting memento for fans and a testament to Mr. Belvedere's unique blend of humor and heart. Despite its shifting schedules and the eventual syndication release of unaired episodes, Mr. Belvedere remains an enduring part of 1980s television history, cherished for its memorable characters and unexpected narrative twists. The roots of the 1985 TV series Mr. Belvedere trace back to Gwen Davenport's 1947 novel, Belvedere. This source material inspired a comedy film, Sitting Pretty, with Clifton Webb as Mr. Belvedere. The film's success led to two more features, Mr. Belvedere Goes to College and Mr. Belvedere Rings the Bell. The TV adaptation, however, underwent changes, notably in the pilot episode, where George Owen starts as a construction worker. It was a nod to Bob Euchre's real-life career as a sportscaster, later shaping George's character into a newspaper sports reporter and, eventually, a television sportscaster. Another distinctive element is the series' theme song, according to our new arrival, initially crafted for a different show called Help. 
The song's journey included an initial pilot version by an unnamed singer and a later rendition by blues artist Leon Redbone when Mr. Belvedere secured a spot on ABC. Gary Portnoy's 2007 release of an unheard version added a unique layer to the show's musical history. In summary, Mr. Belvedere's origins in Gwen Davenport's novel, coupled with character evolution, and the theme song's intriguing backstory, encapsulate the series' dynamic journey from conception to its place in 1980s television history. In the world of the 1985 TV series Mr. Belvedere, character nuances added a layer of humor to the show. One recurring gag involved Angela Shostakovich, Heather Owen's dim-witted best friend, comically butchering Mr. Belvedere's name. From Mr. Bombardier to Mr. Bunny Hopper, Angela's creative misnomers became a humorous trademark. Meanwhile, George Owens affectionately referred to Mr. Belvedere as Big Guy, emphasizing the familial bond between the two characters. Beyond character quirks, behind-the-scenes decisions shaped the show's narrative. The producers grappled with the portrayal of Mr. Belvedere's diary entries. The debate centered on whether he should actively write during voiceovers or simply reflect on what he had already written. This deliberation reveals the meticulous thought invested in crafting the character's inner world and the unique storytelling choices made in the series. In the realm of sitcoms, where character dynamics and production decisions intertwine, Mr. Belvedere carved its place. The mischievous banter of Angela and George's endearing nickname for Mr. Belvedere became integral to the show's charm, demonstrating how small details contribute to the overall success of a television series. In a notable scene from the second season episode, Mr. Belvedere, the teacher, viewers witnessed Mr. Belvedere turning off the television with a remote control, a moment embedded in the opening credits. This small yet iconic detail reflects the show's attention to quirky nuances. Amidst its run, the series faced scheduling changes, like being excluded from ABC's fall lineup for the 1987-1988 TV season. However, a twist of fate brought it back when Max Headroom was abruptly cancelled, securing Mr. Belvedere's continued presence on the network. Adding a surprising touch to the show, then child actress and future pop sensation Stacey Ferguson, Aka Fergie, appeared in the season 2 episode Mr. Belvedere, Valentine's Day. In a guest role as Beth, a sophisticated classmate with a crush on Wesley, Fergie showcased her early talents. These unique aspects, from the remote control scene to the show's unpredictable journey in the network lineup, and the unexpected guest appearance of a future music star, contribute to the fascinating tapestry of the 1985 TV series Mr. Belvedere. As we bid adieu to the enchanting world of Mr. Belvedere, let the echoes of laughter and life lessons linger in the corridors of your memories. This timeless 1985 TV series has woven itself into the fabric of our cultural tapestry, leaving behind a trail of quirky characters and heartwarming tales. Take a moment to stroll down the memory lane of your own connection with Mr. Belvedere. Was it the witty banter between the Owens family members that resonated with you, or perhaps the sage advice of the impeccable Mr. Belvedere himself? Maybe it was the trials and triumphs of a seemingly ordinary family that mirrored the essence of your own life. As you reflect on the cherished moments this series has gifted you, we invite you to share your thoughts. Your memories are the threads that weave the intricate tapestry of communal nostalgia. What did Mr. Belvedere mean to you? What life lessons did you carry from Wesley, or what pearls of wisdom did Mr. Belvedere impart that still echo in your mind? Your stories, your reflections, they are the testament to the enduring magic of Mr. Belvedere. Let your voice join the chorus of fans who found solace, laughter, and a bit of themselves in this beloved series. Thank you for taking this nostalgic journey with us. Your time and interest are the heartbeat of our shared appreciation for the classics that stand the test of time. Share your thoughts, relive the moments, and let the spirit of Mr. Belvedere live on in our collective memories.